Hi guys. All right, so what we're doing is the first of many sessions, one-on-one -on -one sessions with persons of interest. So you can get to know us a little bit better, know our backstory, how we started, everything and anything. Um, as we go on, we're going to invite you to ask our questions. Of course, always we want you to like, share and subscribe. Um, and again, it's getting a little bit more intimate with us. So today I'm going to be talking about how we started as persons of interest before there was persons of interest and what led up to persons of interest becoming what we are and our first EP. So it all started when I was living in Ochi at the time and I heard a band in my area rehearsing and I got the inspiration to write, to write a song, a song called Games, that's on our first EP. So I wrote Games while this band was rehearsing and then they stopped rehearsing, but I only got to write the chorus and one verse. I never get to write anymore because I stopped playing and I was staying outside like, they're not gonna start playing sometime soon. Like I need to, I need to finish writing this song. And I don't know how I'm gonna finish writing it because them stopped playing. Anyways, so that happened. And then a couple weeks after that, there's a studio that was around the road from where I lived. Now, if you know me, you know that my parents are visual artists. So I've always been in the world of art whether it be visual, um, art, or dancing, or music, it's just always been a part of my life. But I've always wanted to sing, me and Afia, my sister. We've always wanted to sing, but I never really know how to get into the music. Like, how was I going to do it? Anyways, so the studios are on the road from me, so I'm like, yeah, this is cool. Like, a couple houses down from me, so I'm like, all right, it's fated for me to be where I am now because it's lining me up in some way. Um, at the studio, and I was going into the town of Ocho Rios, and my friend who worked at the studio, Cade, he was like, yo, um, just come with me. My virgin going into, into Ochi and he can get a ride. So I was like, all right, then cool. I can save $120, get a free ride into the town. I'm cool with that. So we we'll walk out to the road and car drive up and I meet Conroy for the first time. And we in the car driving down to in the car driving down to Ocho Rios and you know got to talking a little bit, not too much, exchange numbers. And a few weeks after that, I got a call from my friend and his name is Cade. Cade was like, yo, um, my virgin that you meet the other day, him asking you if you can come sing some backup for him because they're going to do a TVJ performance and the person who them normally use, she's not available, can you do it? So I was like, yeah, you know, I don't have a problem. I want to get into music, so this is like an opportunity for me. So we link up and I think that's where I figured out that he was the band his band at the time that was Black Male, they were the band that was rehearsing that I did write games off of, but me never get for done. Anyways, so decided that, you know, they were going to use me to do the background vocals for that performance on TVJ. And um, we went down to Trelawney to do the rehearsals. So Sherwin was the bass guitar player. We had Joel Bangi, who used to play keyboard. And we had Bacteria Leroy who was the drummer at the time. Um, so we did the rehearsals, nice rehearsals. Then the next day we're supposed to leave really early in the morning. For all of the musicians who have ever done a performance on TVJ, you know you have to get there from like five, six o'clock in the morning to set up everything and then start shooting at maybe like seven or eight o'clock. All right, so the following day, morning rather, when we're getting ready, I think we're already in Kingston. So, yes, I think we're already in Kingston. So Sherwin and them were supposed to, Sherwin, Bangi and Bacteria were supposed to come down from Trelawney and meet us in Kingston. We had already gone to Kingston um, the night before so that we could be there early because we had come from Ochi. 
So that morning now, we're waiting on Sherwin and them to come and they weren't able to make it and that basically caused a rift between them and that performance, it wasn't going to, I think it wasn't, it wasn't going to happen. Connor was like, you know what, I'm, I'm not going to do this, screw this, call them and tell them, say, we're not going to be able to make it. But I was there, the singer was there, Jer Jerry was there, Spanky was there and um, Dada was there as well. And we we're like, no man, we can do it with just us. At the time, Jerry and Ramon were basically friends of the band. They heard Black Male and they really admired them and, you know, wanted to be around them to learn from them to become like better musicians and stuff like that. So they were like, no, like we can help you, we can do it. And I'm like, yeah, I want to do it too. Cause we did rehearse and all of that. So how we ended up doing it, we, I was singing of course, Jerry played percussions on the second keyboard. Conrad played his keyboard and the singer. So that's how the setup was for that performance. The performance went good to me. I thought it was a good performance. Of course, I think Conrad was still kind of upset based on how everything went down, but happy at the same time because it worked. It did work out, actually. Now, after we did that performance, I went over to Conrad's house, which turned out was right around the road from me. Um, I went over, over to his house and I was basically like going through my catalogs of songs that I'd written. I let him hear games and I say, yo, I heard you guys rehearsing and I wrote games. And then I sing it for him and he was like, oh, all right, cool, yeah. He wrote the second verse for that song. So that song was complete. So I was like, Phew. <laughs> I don't have to worry about trying to figure out how to finish it this time. So he has a verse on that song and then I'd let him heard I'd let him hear Trust in Ja, which is a song that I wrote on another rhythm for somebody I never really knew. So I let him hear Trust in Ja and he was really excited about doing that song. He said like what he heard was just singer and keyboard player. And he started playing the keyboard and I was like, yeah, this so nice. So at the time, he didn't have any studio equipment yet. So we had to record that song at his friend's house, Dale Haslam. So we recorded that song as a demo. We let... Uh, yeah, after we recorded that song, just to like mix it, we went to the studio that was around the road from me, which is Drop the Bass Studio in Ocho Rios. We went there and did some mixing of the song. And, you know... It was something that I felt really proud about. It wasn't my first song that I recorded, but it's the first song that I felt so like connected to. It was being there for the whole process because all the other recordings that I'd done before that was to an already existing rhythm. Like I've never been there involved in the creation of the melody, you know? So it was really special for me. So then Conroy took it to his friend who had a mechanic shop in Ocho Rios, Mr. Miller. And he heard it and he was like, yo, this nice man. I'm going to make my friend hear it. My friend worked for RFM. And then somebody called me a couple of days later. And I was like, yo, your song a play. Elise Kelly, I play a song. And I'm like, that was his friend? <laughs> like, cool. So the song started getting a whole heap of airplay from then. Um, we were initially, what Conrad initially wanted to do was to produce me as an artist solo. So our first EP has four songs on it and it was called Trust in Ja by Monifa and the Persons of Interest. Um, so after we did Trust in Ja and it started playing on the radio, we were all, and by we, I mean me, Conroy, Spangy and Dada were all working at a hotel on the North Coast at the time. So we would constantly play together like every week, at least two, three times per week. Um, after the song started getting some traction, then we decided to try see if we could go perform on Jazz and Blues Festival. And we got through. We sent in Trust in Ja, the demo and you know all our information and they got in contact with us and was like yeah you know we want you guys to come and perform which i'm of course super excited about because this is going to be my 
not my first first performance but like as a solo act at the time which was very 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 exciting for me so i called in afia my sister to come sing back up for me and on that show and you know from there she just kind of became a part of the band um being that we had gotten through to do the performance on jazz and blues i know that i was going to sing trust in jar you know i know that i was going to sing games as well but i was like okay what else are we going to sing i just found this out recently by the way so there's a song that conroy wrote specifically for us to perform at jazz and blues festival which me just have find out say him they write it for that and initially i was like yo that song is not for me I can't sing that song, it's not really my style. If you know us, the song is this them. So it got this them, but them can't this we. Whip them, but them can't whip we. Cause we smart and we bad no blood clot. Hey! <laughs> so when Connor sing that song for me first, Mr. said no. No, I can't sing that song. Me must sing that song with Badred in there. I can't do that. I'm like, no man, trust me, trust me. You can't sing it. You can't sing it. Trust me. You it just, you, have, you can't pull it off. So I say, oh, I'm afraid. <laughs> it have a bad word in there. And if you know me, you know some of us bad word like all the time. But to sing it, it was like, ah, no, I can't do that. But him convinced me and I said, all right, then cool. All right, all right, all right, all right, I'll do it. Of course, for jazz and blues, we did perform it, but we cut out the bad word part because you know, you know all the things already. But yeah, so um, doing all of the rehearsals for jazz and blues with the band Spangy and Dada and everybody, it was just like a whole vibe. We did most of the rehearsals at my house at the time in Ocho Rios. And it was just... A dream come true for me because I've always wanted to be in music in that way and as I said I never really know how but I felt like all of the stars were aligning and the universe was just kind of putting things in my way to make to to propel me on this path of music so um, we did the jazz and blues performance and it was amazing you know I that was my introduction to the world of music and musicians. So Sharpman was there and like before we did perform, he was kind of apprehensive because we weren't, re we weren't really known. Like I wasn't really known as a singer. Spangy and Dada weren't known as, you know, drum and bass as yet. So they were just getting to know them, just seeing them. And they were like, okay, I could say, oh, they are going to do this now. We don't know these guys. And then we perform and I guess even for me, it was just a sensation of just being blown away of what I could do, how we sounded together, what we were like. It was amazing. Yeah, so after the Jazz and Blues performance, then we started to do more performances. So it's like, and it still happens to this, sorry. It still happens to this day like whenever persons see us perform somewhere, anywhere, it opens another door for us to perform somewhere else. So after Jazz and Blues Festival, we did Portland Jerk Festival. Um, what else did we do? We did a whole heap of other festivals, like within that, the first year or two years that we were together, we did a whole heap of different shows all over the place. Little shows in Kingston, you know, shows in Mobe, uh, seafood festival in Mobe. We did that one. We did the one in Ocho Rios at the time. Um, just a lot of doors were opening up for us, and it was just like an amazing feeling to have that experience. Um, so then, at this point, we had Trust in Jar and we had games recorded. Um, no lies. We had Trust in Jar recorded. So we had games to record. We had this them to record. And then Conroy had another song called Tess. My people, I'm gonna put you to the test. Had that song. And 
we needed to record them. So we went, we came into Kingston and we recorded at our friends. Well, he's my friend now too, but Conrad's good friend, uh, Andre Bailey. Make up yourself, Zion and Quick Mix. So we went to their studio on um, Mountain View. That was on Mountain View Avenue at the time. And we recorded this, them and tests and games. So we recorded all three of those songs over like a couple of days. And of course, another amazing experience there. Now the story with this, them does not stop at me not wanting to perform it. But the next part of that story now is Conrad's mother cussing him off after we recorded the songs. Of course, you know, Conrad shared the songs with him family that's in the States and stuff. And he has a niece. And at the time she was 11. Now, she's not Jamaican. So she don't know, say, a bad word in the song. She just hear the song and it's like, yo, it's Uncle Dane's song. I like it. She's in the kitchen with her grandma who is a devoted Seventh-day Adventist disciple, <laughs> right? So she's in the, in the kitchen and she's singing, yo, Grandma, Uncle Dane's song, nice. And we smart and we bad no blood clot. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Grandma begs no because our little 11-year-old granddaughter, so her little 11-year-old granddaughter is singing her uncle song innocently, not knowing say a bad word song she has sing. So of course Conroy mother call him same time and start cuss him off and say, May I take away our son from the church and how he show me a company, I tell you who you are and him never did have locks at the time. <laughs> and then, you know, I'm the Rasta girl and me I lead him astray and one heap of cussing over the song and I was like, but I never even write the song. I never want to sing the song. And him say, oh yeah, do it. But he was able to quell her and, you know, calm her down. I think I'm still blamed for that to this day. But I saw it go. I want good songs still. Um, so that's the second story with, with, with this them. Now, we had these four songs. We're doing our best to get them out there, have them played on the radio. Trust in Jah was playing on the radio. Um, Test was playing on the radio as well. And we linked up with my auntie, Monifa Hilton. She is known by some people in the music business. She used to assist with the business of music business. Um, and I'm very thankful to her for doing that for us to just give us a better understanding of what music is all about there's so many different aspects to music and as a creative sometimes we might forget to take care of the business part we have a lot of artists that will come up talented people and because they don't understand the business aspect of it they'll fall prey to persons who take advantage of that so she made us aware of all of those things very 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 early out got us signed up with BMI so we can collect our royalties um, and what else yeah make sure that we released our first EP which as I said earlier was called money for and persons of interest because we weren't looking to be a band as yet but eventually we realized you know the relationship that we have and the chemistry and the, the amount of gelling that we did get for gel, you know, performing together every week, two times, three times a week in the hotel, um, that we wanted to pursue a band and not just me and a band, you know. Um, and there are not many female-led bands, I don't think I can think of any right now, that we have coming out of Jamaica, female-led bands, so that was another thing. It was me and my sister. Jerry and Ramon are cousins, you know, and then there's Conrad, the man from Spanish Town. And it was just an amazing combination of things. Um, releasing that one, that EP, was just a, like an amazing milestone for me. I keep saying amazing, but it's true because like everything was just lining up perfectly. And just pushing me towards, say, oh, yeah, 
music. That's that's where it should go. So everything was pushing me in that stream and my grateful feet. Being able to link up with Conroy, who is an amazing musician, an amazing writer, composer, everything. Um, he's been touring since he was 17. Lloyd Parks and We The People, Holy for Other Artists, um, Church as well. All of them come out of church. I think I'm the only, me and Afia are the only two people in the band who never come from a church background. So Ramon and Jerry, I think one of them is Seventh-day Adventist Church of God and one of them is Seventh-day Adventist, I'm not sure. I don't really know the difference of them have to teach me these things. But yeah, so them coming out of church, Conroy coming out of church as well. And I, I believe that a lot of musicians in our industry coming from there. And church is just a, 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 a nice, what can I say? I don't want to say breeding ground. Hmm, a nice place. <laughs> to develop like people's love for music and their instruments so we have a whole heap of musicians in Jamaica coming out of churches so yeah that's pretty much our introduction how we became persons of interest uh, as I said before this is the first in a whole heap more to come series one-on-one -on -one with persons of interest all right so here what we want you guys to do we want you to submit your questions to our youtube channel and all any question any question we have as it relates to anything persons of interest we want you to submit all of those questions so in the coming weeks we can just address some of those questions answer any other questions that you want us to answer um yeah, and I'm looking forward to building this relationship with you guys over YouTube. Um, you'll be hearing from Conroy as well. You'll be hearing from other persons in the band. So stay tuned. <laughs>